G'day folks, Andy here from McDowell Manor. So here's just another little quickie video, um, update and gardens for oncoming supposed winter, which is just a less hot summer for us. Um, that was where the Egyptian spinach was. You've now got cauliflowers and snow peas in the back. And I've bunged that trellis in for the snow peas. Alrighty, the real one I want to do this morning is this aquaponics bed. Uh, yeah, it looks alright from here. As you can see from this side, it's, you know, it's not productive anymore. Kang Kong dies back in winter. So I'm going to pull all that Kang Kong out and feed that off to the chooks. That'll give me virtually the whole bed. There's a chili bush on the other side I'm going to keep because it's a good producer. There's a sorrel over there I'll keep. The sawtooth coriander is the only coriander pretty much I can grow over here. Um, it's a perpetual one. And there's a little bit of mint around the place I'll try and keep as well. But I'll give you a fairly quick, hopefully, uh, look at how this progresses as it goes a along. Bit of green stuff come out of there. Bits of Brahmi memory herb I cut back. You can see the size of various clumps of the root on that Kang Kong. It was pretty big. Um, that was a bit of a tough gig actually pulling that out of there. You can see the girls love that bloody Kang Kong. Look at them. <laughs> they go for Kang Kong before they go for bread. And they're loving it. That'll get rid of it for me. Save me composting it. Good on you girls. It's just one arm. I cut off the chili bush I didn't want. Um, I'll use the red ones obviously. They get dried and go in the chili powder. Straighten that little chilli up a bit, um, I'll trim him up a bit more, but you can see the extent of bed space that I was really just leaving wasted, can't you? So that's a whole big bed, that's um, 2.4 metres long that bed, and it's a metre, 1.2 metres wide, so she's a fairly significant bed, far too big to let go to rack and ruin. There's a lot of stuff that's going to go in, there's French beans on the right. Uh, there's leeks in the middle that look like chives, but they assure me they're leeks. And on the left-hand edge is meant to be um, sugarloaf cabbage. So when I plant seedlings in the aquaponics, this is my beans. I get a little bucket of water. And I just dip the plants in. I get most of the dirt off. I don't go crazy and get every, you can see, I don't get every last little bit. Um, and I just shove that in. That's the beauty of these clay balls, they're so easy to work with. So the beans I shoved along the front edge. My assumption is that they'll hang down over the side instead of having to go upwards on a trellis. There's your cabbages up one end. Beside them we've got the leeks. Hopefully you can see them. I have actually, oh, I was going to tell you, I split a lot of them up. But the truth is when I got them out of the little seedling boxes, they broke up. So I took advantage of that and planted them a bit separately. I've also just sprinkled, because I had spare, where well, you can't see a lot of plant growth there. I sprinkled a packet of broccoli and a packet of cauliflower. Now the reason I do that is twofold. It's worked for me in the past pretty well. I don't know if you remember that, but I've often sown from seed in this bed. Um, so that's as good a reason as any. But the other is, you know, I've got a lot of these seeds lying around and quite frankly, if I don't use them, they're going to go to waste. They have an expiry date and usually they're best within the first 12 months, I find. Um, so why not chuck them in? It's the season. Uh, it won't stop me. If I see a lot of growth come up, it will stop me from putting more seedlings in. Otherwise, I'll pick more seedlings up in the next couple of days. I reckon I've got two thirds of a bed I could still plant out there, folks. Quick to update on the quails, I've still got the original four in the bottom pen, they're laying like beauties. Um, I've got five in the next pen up, uh, that was my first lot of babies and one from the second lot. Um, and in the top I have my last two babies, way over on the other side there. Um, they were too young to go to the shop yet, the other ones, there was seven in this top pen. They got traded at the local produce shop for a $25 really good quality coarse laying mash that will feed the chickens. Um, if I'm not going to kill the quails and eat them, um, I'm going to barter them 
for chicken feed and quail feed, which seems like a pretty good outcome to me. Yeah, so the quails really are doing me proud. I'm getting at least six eggs a day from them. Um, given it's winter, that's not bad. So, so three and a half dozen just sitting there on the bench. Uh, and trust me, me and my grandson, we eat, eat quite a few of these every day. Good going. Crazy weather, final thing. Crazy weather over here. The gooseberry's back. It's bloody almost as big as ever. Um, and it's covered in fruit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, this climate change, it can't possibly be true, folks. But by God, my yard's doing some weird things. <laughs> anyway, that'll be it. The weekend's coming up, so I hope you have a good one. And I'll catch you next time, eh? See ya.